What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at another really cool folding knife. This is the Bestec Ornetta. Uh, Bestec is a company that I have very much come to enjoy as of late. Uh, my first experience with them being the Lion. If you've watched some of my previous videos or, or my most recent top five I think it was on there. Um, you'll know my feelings about the Lion. That's part of their budget line. The knife in front of you is absolutely part of their premium line. Um, this is titanium and we can get a close up right there, M390. Beautiful M390 black washed blade. We have some very nicely sculpted uh, and milled titanium scales. We've got a nice pivot collar. Uh, bearings um, are running on bearings and it is a flipper. So. Um, this is a, a very, uh, very premium folding knife. Let's go ahead and take some measurements here real quick. The overall length of the Ornetta, let's get it straight here. Ooh, eight and a half inches. Yeah, is that? Yeah, it's right at eight and a half inches. How about blade length? Blade to scale, it's hard because there's that point there. Probably looking at 3.6 inches to that tip. If you want to go to this part right here, you're looking at 3.75. Cutting edge, you're looking at about 3.3 .3 to 3.4 inches on the cutting edge. Probably more like 3.3 .3 because there is a choil there. Let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Pivot to pivot. 8.6 inches on the Rat 1. So you can see there we're very close in length. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches. PM2 just a little bit shorter than this guy. How about the Hinderer XM18? XM18 coming in at eight and a quarter inches overall. Uh, how about the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. And last but not least, how about the Spyderco Delica? Spyderco Delica coming in at seven inches overall. So because of this knife's profile being kind of like, kind of slender, um, it gave me the impression it was shorter than it was. I would have guessed eight and a quarter, um, but it's actually eight and a half. Uh, weight on this guy, we have 4.41 ounces. How about a second try here? 4.44 ounces, so call it 4.4 to 4.5. Um, that is because of its overall size and the fact that the inside here has a little bit, that's, it's fairly milled. There's two big rectangle cutouts there you can see. But it is solid titanium. Uh, I wouldn't call it thick, but you know the blade stock is definitely not thin. Let's compare it with the XM18. Just about cut my finger off with the XM18. XM18 at 165 thousandths is definitely thicker than this guy. I'm gonna say it's closer to the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 at 145 thousandths. Yeah, that's probably what we're looking at there. 145 thousandths would be my guess. Um, so yeah, this is an awesome knife. If you watch me unbox it, you'll know I was very impressed with it right off the bat. Um, let's do, uh, let's take a look at the anatomy here. We have a very interesting um, drop point blade with a fuller that runs out um, to the tip. So you can see there um, that change uh, and the geometry out towards the tip is due to that fuller right there. It's a really, really nice looking, very futuristic theme here with this knife, definitely. It's it's very, um, you know, excessive over the top with the futuristic look, but it's awesome. And you still have, you can see there how the belly starts right after the finger choil. You have this nice cutting belly. Um, it's feeling very, it's a very sticky edge, nice uh, symmetrical um, grind, by the way. I have such a problem when I bump into my camera here. Um, but anyways, nice symmetrical grind. You know, the uh, the cutting bevel is the same on both sides. Um, nice belly on this. You have a nice forward choil that has plenty of room uh, to get your finger in there. And you've got a little bit of jimping up top here. You also have, you know, of course, the flipper tab is the primary means of deployment. And it's shaped very well and not uh, obtrusive. Of course, if you put your fingers on the frame lock, it's not going to flip there. I like to keep mine. I like to try to keep mine back there on the uh, pocket clip so that you can flip it like that. You do have that little cutout there. It makes it very easy to do the reverse flick. You can do the thumb flick, but you have to you have to kick it out this way, and it kind of works. It's frustrating. Uh, so I would say just use the um, 
deployment mecha- mechanism that um, this knife was, de- you know, designed to, to, to have used during deployment. And then if you want, you can do the reverse flick too. Moving down to the handle scales, which is probably, in my opinion, the highlight of this knife. Um, you have a uh, decorative pivot with some milling there and a more of a brass looking pivot collar. The adjustment side is on this side, by the way, it's a Torx head. Um, but uh, then you can see the 3D um, or the uh, milling lines on this knife, um, the detail. Um, I hope, you know, uh, that uh, if you're watching this on your TV or your phone, I hope it's picking up all of this detail because it is amazing. You can see there's even texturing on this um, cutout right here. Not really texturing that's, I would say, functional, but man, up close, it is stunning. It's crazy. The lines in this knife are just unreal. Um, that is absolutely the highlight for me. You have a nice backspacer back here with a little bit of jimping. You can see how just how perfect all the lines are. Um, nice little lanyard loop back there, lanyard loop, otherwise an open body construction besides the, uh, the, um, partial backspacer. By the way, I haven't said this yet. This knife was provided to me directly by the manufacturer or rather to the pass around group that I am involved in. Um, I didn't purchase this knife as, as usual, I will, you know, try not to let this affect my review, but also as usual, this knife is not something I get to keep. So it's generally pretty easy to um, be honest about everything. Moving over to the other side, you have a very nice 3D sculpted titanium clip. Um, there's so much detail on the handle scales that it kind of, I forget that there are screws. Like the only thing that looks normal or familiar on the knife are just the heads of the screws, which are almost completely hidden by the beauty and the striking nature of the scales. They're just crazy. I mean, this is just unreal. Um, the clip looks nice. Um, I'm not a big fan of curved clips. It definitely looks knife and it at night knife. It definitely looks nice and it absolutely goes with the theme of the knife. Uh, it rides about right here. So not a crazy amount of it sticking up. I think that's just fine. Um, it's definitely a strong clip, good retention, and, uh, it's going to hold the knife in your pants pocket, which is really just what it's supposed to do. Anyway, you do of course have a steel lock bar insert that, uh, acts as an over travel stop. Um, you can see here it's locking up at, I don't know, 25%, something like that. Um, centering is almost perfect. It's just a little bit off, but not that big of a deal. Um, as I've said before, the centering is not 100% something that's going to be a deal breaker for me. But with this knife costing $253, I don't know. I'm hoping that maybe the centering has come off a little bit just from the other reviewers that have been playing with this knife and flipping it, surely flipping it repeatedly over and over and over again, because that's what I've been doing. Um, and that, you know, over time that does cause the centering to come off and you have to readjust the uh, pivot um, or add some Loctite. Sometimes you don't have to do that, but if, if that happens, it never bothers me because it's something I can adjust back to normal. I don't know if the first person who received this knife from Best Deck got it and the centering was perfect and then it, it came uncentered as people played with it. I don't know. I'm not really going to count it off for that. Though, I will say this. If I receive a $250 knife and the centering is off, it, it bothers me. And that's kind of where it starts to bother me. 200 to 250 bucks. Come on. Let's get it centered. You know, I... Of course, I love, you know, like my Spyderco knives, my $130 uh, Paramilitary 2s and Manix 2s. If those come off centered, eh, I don't really care all that much. You know, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, uh, of course, you know, when I receive a $135 Spyderco knife like this PM2 that's perfectly centered, yeah, I love that. So I don't like to pay $253 for one that is not centered. But it's not a deal breaker because, again, it's it's annoying, but it, it doesn't affect the function of the knife until it starts to rub. You know, if it's if it comes to you and then and the blade is rubbing, send it back. Absolutely. Um, if it starts to rub after use, try and adjust it yourself. Get it back centered, and if it's fine, then it's fine. Um, but anyways, I don't know. That's kind of a case by case situation. Anyways, let's talk about ergonomics on this guy. Um, so this is actually a large knife at eight and a half inches. Um, and you get a surprisingly large amount of blade, you know, when I, I mean, you don't realize it until you've got it in hand or you are, are measuring it exactly how big this thing is because closed it, 
it's such a sm I mean it just feels smaller than it actually is. It's not necessarily a skinny knife. You know, you have pretty fairly thick chunks of titanium there on each side compared to the Hinder XM18. You can see there, I mean we're we're working with the same thickness basically uh, between the XM18 and, and this guy. But the profile is just so sleek and the contouring of the scales, the slight contouring uh, and uh, kind of the, the uh, slim profile of the blade. Um, it's just when, you know, when I measured it there at eight and a half inches, I was kind of surprised by that because it just feels kind of like a, not a skinny knife, but just a skinnier knife that I'm used to handling in this size range. Um, so ergonomics are great. That doesn't 100% what I was saying there have to do with ergonomics, but it's very easy to get my hand all the way around, whether you're back here in the standard position, you can see there are lots of room for my fingers, or if you're choked up up here on the uh, finger choil, lots of room up there in the finger choil, no problem. Um, it's great, you know, very comfortable. This knife does run on bearings, um, and you know, Knives that run on bearings that are big like this, you know, are long, I, you know, I don't know. I, I wouldn't call this a hard use knife. I would call it a larger medium use EDC with a focus on, you know, the appearance, the presentation and the fidget factor. I mean, this is your standard. I mean, as far as how the knife functions, this is your standard sort of semi droppy uh, frame lock running on bearings with a really nice blade steel and an incredible appearance. Um, for $253, you're absolutely getting what you're, what you're paying for. Um, you're getting a top-notch steel. You're getting um, some amazing machine work, both in the blade and the handle scales. Um, you're getting some, some dressy stuff, you know, like the pivot collar. Um, and you're also getting bearings and you're getting a, a very tuned, a very well-tuned detent. The flipper uh, works extremely well. There's nothing to complain about there. As far as I can tell, at the time of this video, it comes in three different configurations. The black wash version you're seeing here. Then they also have a green and brass, like the, the blade is um, uh, satin finished. And then you have a green titanium frame with the brass hardware. And then you also have a version of it with a blue tumbled frame and a two-tone blade, so partially black and partially satin finished. Um, each one of those runs about the same. Really, really cool. You know, if this is something that has caught your eye and you're wondering, hey, is my money well spent on it? Um, if you're wanting a really, really premium knife um, that's got, uh, you know, the, the conversation factor to it, the fidget factor, and it's just really, really nice to look at, but it's also gonna function as an everyday cutting tool that doesn't weigh your pants down or doesn't, you know, take up a whole bunch of room in your pocket. Yeah, this is a great knife, absolutely. Um, you know, like like a lot of knives in the same caliber, don't expect to be able to go out and, you know, beat on it like a Cold Steel 8010. You know, I mean, this is uh, like, I mean, there most knives that we're all into right now are kind of this same build. They're titanium frame locks with steel lock bar inserts that double as over travel stops. You have an M390 or S35VN blade and it's running on bearings. And then the emphasis is put on all the detail in the knife. Um, back when I, you know, back in like 2014, the, the dominant knife in this price range was, I mean, at least in my opinion, that was a lot like this, this flipper frame lock setup, was the ZT0562, namely the carbon fiber and M390 version. That was the first version of that before they switched it to 204P and ultimately 20CV, I think. At the time, that knife ran 240 bucks, and it was amazing. It was like, wow, a titanium frame lock with a carbon fiber front and an M390 blade. Oh my gosh, it's so much better than the real thing the XM18 that it was based on, um, that's a steal, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Well, now these, uh, these Chinese companies, and by the way, this knife is not made in the USA, it's made uh, uh, in China, um, are doing all of that and they're adding all of this like amazing contoured 3D, you know, ma machine work and you're getting these crazy blade shapes and you're, you're, you're getting full titanium in this case, not carbon fiber with a liner. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's crazy what we're getting here. It's no more or less capable than other knives in the same caliber. It's just got its own theme. So if you are attracted to how this knife looks, um, you know, I, I don't know that it's better than any of the other knives that are flooding the market right now um, that are in the same caliber. But um, if you like how this knife looks, your money is definitely well spent, um, you know, because of all the materials you're getting and, and, and stuff like that. But Essentially now in this day and age, 
or currently you're, you're just paying for the thing that visually makes you happy um, because there are hundreds if not thousands of models out there doing this exact same thing and it's fun but it's also kind of like you know where it, it's um uh it, it's nice to have all of these choices it's definitely nice to have all these choices it sounds like i'm going to complain i'm not i'm just pointing this out um but it kind of stinks that like it's it's at its base it's it's, it's all exactly the same thing um i'm still enjoying these i just feel like you know, something eventually has got to happen. Either we, we've got to have a different um, fidgety mechanism that kind of draws people away from this flipper frame lock craze that's going on, or, um, you know, maybe a different lock or a different, you know, blade material. or, or some, I, I feel like something is going to happen, um, both in the budget world and in the premium world with folding knives, where um, we, still see, we still see stuff like this, but, you know, there's this, like, there's this new thing to pay... $250 for 250 bucks to me is like a magic price for a premium knife. It's probably about the point of diminishing returns. It's, I mean, truthfully, it's really hard to get better. You have maximum function, you know, in terms of like deployment and, um, you know, the, the blade shape and the blade steel and the materials. And then you also have like maximum flashiness kind of as far as what people like. You know, it, it matches up so perfectly with that price that anything beyond $250, you kind of you get less and less and less. You know, I guess, I don't know why I'm explaining that, like you guys don't know what diminishing returns means. But um, that's kind of a magic number to me, as is, you know, about 50 to 75 bucks in the budget world, you know, and they're both, to me, they're kind of peaked out right now. I don't know why I chose this video on the Ornetta to talk about this, because I mean, if you guys just want to move on to the next video, yeah, I'm absolutely going to recommend this knife. This is an awesome knife. There's very little to complain about. It's awesome. I just wanted an opportunity to talk about this. Um, I just feel like something is going to happen in both of these worlds, you know, and Best Deck is a company that makes excellent knives in the $50 to $75 mark, like the Lion, and they also make amazing knives like these uh, in the $250 line, you know. There's a reason we're seeing like, you know, G10 steel flipper bearings with D2 at 50 bucks, you know, and we're seeing titanium on bearings and M390 uh, with, you know, 3D contouring and machining at 250 bucks. That's like, that's like what people go for in those two price ranges. And there's, there's so much out there. It's just a crazy amount that's out there on both price ranges. I just, I feel like something's going to happen. I'm excited to see what it is. Um... But, uh, you know, I, this, this line, there, this, uh, this, these types of knives, you know, them being popular, it, it can't last forever. So some, something's going to change. I just don't know what it is. But anyways, that was a weird, like, ranty thing that I went on uh, where we weren't necessarily really talking about this knife. Um, but uh, this knife is awesome. I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. Um, if this looks like something that, you know, would bring you joy aesthetically... Um, yeah, you're good pulling the trigger on it. Um, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't feel like I really need to complain about too much at that price. This is a very, very well-made piece. Um, excellent, solid lockup. No, no blade play up, down, left, or right. Very well-tuned detent, fun flipping action, nearly a free dropper. And you have all of that, those amazing aesthetics to tie it in. But anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or uh, that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So please check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.